In this vlog, I'm going to be talking about my Mitsubishi Delica and why buying it may not have been the best decision I've ever made. First things first, we'll start the engine. There we go. We need some wiper action today. I'll put lights on because that's always sensible. And uh, we shall head off. But I need to get out of here. I am in Carmarvin today. Uh, which is uh, quite gloomy. It was quite uh, pleasant and sunny. It now definitely is not. I've just had um, wax removed from my ears uh, with a tiny vacuum cleaner. And uh, for the first time in a very long time, my hearing is now amazing. Uh, I hadn't realized quite how bad things had got. But yeah, the Mitsubishi Delica, um, it is definitely not proving to be one of my better purchases and uh, I've been doing a lot of thinking and thinking well maybe I should just put it up for sale and get rid of it but um, I think it's so bad I'm, I'm not sure how saleable it actually is I thought you could have waited for me personally mate but you're not interested yeah it, it's when you you're stuck with it that's when it's a really bad purchase uh, I spent £1,200 buying it I've already spent um, over 200 quid on tires, um, probably about the same again on brakes, some of which I haven't yet fitted because I've been busy getting the 2CV working again. So uh, it can't really be regarded uh, as a massive success in financial terms. And um, what do I do? Uh, if it's not saleable in its current state, and I don't believe it is, it's got um, just over a month of MOT left on it, um, but it's gonna need a fair bit of work for that test. Yeah, what, what, what do you do? Um, how, how am I meant to resolve this situation? I think the only options are either just to sell it dirt cheap and, you know, spares and repairs delicas are five, six hundred quid. Um, so that would be quite a loss. Or I just stick with it and um, throw money at it because at least if I throw money at it, I've still got a really useful vehicle. Uh, it is a really useful vehicle. And uh, yeah, I've been driving it today, um, mostly because the 2CV is so loud, I thought that after having my ears cleared, it would be painful. And I certainly wouldn't want to put my earplugs in after just having some work done on them. So I thought I'll bring the Delhi because it's relatively peaceful. And it is relative, when you're climbing hills, it doesn't sound very peaceful at all. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm just gonna have to spend money on it. Uh, because I do like driving it. I know it's slow and cumbersome and all the things I don't usually like. I mean, the engine doesn't exactly sound inspiring, does it? But um, it, it's just really quite nice. I like this really high driving position. I like the wafty laziness of it all. I prefer that laziness to be accompanied by rather more torque um, and a bit more power. Uh, remembering Betty the Ford Fair Montaigu very fondly at this moment but uh, yeah it ticks a lot of boxes and I do want to take it green laning that was rather the point uh, green laning four wheeling you'd call it in America um, I don't know what you cover, call it in other countries we try not to call it off-roading in this country because technically you're driving down byways so they are roads you are legally okay to drive down them they are um, actually highways just off-road ones or off tarmac um, away from sealed surfaces however you want to say it it's um yeah it's just a bit of adventuring isn't it and you know wales does have some good green lanes i've been down a new number of them in different vehicles but not for some years so um, i think i would like to do that i think the children would find that fun I'm not sure whether their mother would be interested in the slightest, but uh, it's all part of the fun is finding out. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think I do want to spend money and, and that's what Hubner is all about really. I kind of stopped on the City Rover more because I was frustrated I couldn't get the bits and it was less to do with um, actually wanting to get rid of the car and also suffering from way too many projects. And the, the City Rover not really occupying a unique spot on the fleet. This does. There is nothing on the fleet like the Mitsubishi Delica. So um, I think I'm going to bite the bullet and go for it. Um, or at the very least, um, I'm going to put it in for an MOT. 
uh, maybe a pre-MOT, um, just find a, a tester to go over it and tell me what's going to be an issue. The thing that's causing me the most headaches at the moment um, is there's a power steering leak and I have no idea where it's coming from. From what I understand, and my knowledge of these cars is even more minimal than it is of most cars, uh, the pump for the um, power steering is driven straight off the back of the engine. So I need to try and, or maybe not the back of the engine, but it's driven directly, there's no belt. So I, I just need to have a look around the pipe runs. I know Jasper replaced the cooler line um, behind the front bumper because he thought that was an issue. Turns out it was an issue, but it wasn't the only issue. Uh, the, the big fear is that it's a leak on the steering rack itself and that becomes problematic. Oh, well, I have at least got the advantage. If it is that, um, getting the rack refurbished might be an issue because I think getting replacement racks is not particularly easy. So we'll, um, we'll see what happens. But yeah, the more I drive this, actually, the more inclined I am to save it. Even with its rattling rear door, I think that's the trim panel on the door that's banging around. I mean, it's a really nice wiper performance for a start. Clap handers. Yeah, triangle of inattention in the middle of the screen, but it's mostly behind the mirror. It's not a problem. But there we go. We'll, we'll see what transpires. Because the biggest issue is I do have rather a lot of projects on the go at the moment. But... Uh, yeah, and I've had no joy with finding another unit so far. Uh, that's why I haven't tried getting electricity sorted out in the one I'm in. It's simply too far away. So visiting the unit more than twice a week is um, a serious effort. Twice a week is 200 miles. So uh, especially with a Delica, it's costing a ridiculous amount in the go-go juice. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what transpires. It may be, but reverting to the plan of finding a new house somewhere to live that actually has a garage um, might be a good idea although that would have to be a rental because yeah uh, uh, youtubers not all millionaires right i need to get some fuel because um, i'm remarkably low on the stuff and uh, we've done over 320 miles on this tank so things are definitely a lot better than they were in terms of economy but um, that's going to be my commitment to this vehicle. I'm going to put a full tank of fuel in it. Although the way it drinks fuel, I'm going to get through it fairly quickly anyway. Uh, it's only a couple of weeks since I last filled it up. Might even only be a week since I last filled it up. Uh, but I'm prattling on a bit. But yes, thank you for your comments as ever. Um, I'm <coughs> slowly accepting the fact that I am a terrible mechanic. Um, so if you are a mechanic, um, you're probably one of those who've left nasty comments. Um, Better comments are left by people who perhaps don't understand cars who think I actually know my way around a vehicle. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm learning all the time and uh, I'm learning with you and uh, I air my dirty laundry. I uh, show you my fails. Uh, people uh, on telly may not be inclined to do that quite so much, um, but I like to show you the reality of my life. The reality is I'm not brilliant and in truth, I think a lot of people are not brilliant. I've encountered garages who aren't brilliant. Um, so just saying, oh, take it to a professional every time. I've taken cars to professionals and had issues. Um, yeah, you, you can't always get away from it. Uh, I'm gonna continue driving home with my new wonderful hearing. I'm looking forward to listening to music again so much. And uh, yeah, I, I will see you in a future video. I'm gonna stop here at the Gulf petrol station for some diesel. I know I could run this on vegetable oil, but um, I'm disinclined to run a vehicle on food. That's my main reason for not using, um, just trying to squeeze in here, not using vegetable oil. Could use waste oil, but that's far. Oh, is this where I find out I've got no diesel on this one? No, this is where I find out the fuel filler is on the other side. That was my mistake. Oh, and this just in, uh, we've, I'll just reset the trip before I forget. Um, that tank to tank, 27 MPG. Uh, when I was doing the part shuffling back and forth um, over the mountain road, fully laden, it dropped to 16. So um, I'll take 27 all day, 
27 is what I used to get out of a two liter Subaru Legacy very consistently. Right, uh, we need some wiperage, lightage, drop it in drivage, and away we go. I mean, what one thing that's also changed is I must admit my driving style is changing. I'm starting to stop trying to flog this thing and get it to speed up. You just, it, it's like driving a W123 Mercedes. There's no point trying to hurry one of those. Just let it gather pace as quickly as it wants to, which isn't very much. That way you keep the revs down and uh, it all works that much better. I want a tractor trying to deliver a trailer into a rock wall, it would seem. Okay. Where's it going? Uh, I'm just going to drive past. I have no idea what he's doing there. <laughs> 